Hey, alumni. It's college application season. Um, more specifically, it's uh, the results of college application season. And there are a lot of successes out there. And it's incredible, right? We need to be able to shout those successes of enlisted service members and veterans everywhere. Um, as you all know, I believe really firmly that we need many more enlisted veterans in all schools, um, in particular in the top schools that have um, not admitted enough enlisted veterans um, historically. And we also need them in graduate schools, um, every graduate program. So if you've achieved success somewhere, awesome. Let us know. We want to shout it out on our social media and the alumni workspace, right? Everywhere that we possibly can. But I don't want to lose sight of the fact that not everybody um, is getting that type of feedback, that type of success that they were really hoping for. Um, being waitlisted can be really hard. Being rejected can be really hard. And um, I want to share two very quick stories about my own personal rejections um, at the undergraduate level that um, shaped me, right? Um, and I want to be able to offer a little bit of advice about what comes next if you're in those situations. So first of all, when I was 17, I grew up outside Chicago and the school that everybody wanted to go to was University of Illinois, right? That was like the place. It was U of I or bust. And so I applied a couple different places. Um, but importantly, U of I said, no, they said, no, all, all my friends, yeah, come on in, my listeners, come on in, all, all of you, right, fine, um, Ryan, not so much, and you know what, they were right, I was a very apathetic high schooler, and, you know, I didn't have the best, rec the best, you know, academic record, and extracurriculars, and all of those things, I wouldn't have admitted me either, so I don't begrudge them that, um, seriously, but it was a really important rejection, because that's part of what led me to join the Marine Corps, right, I, I think about this, this alternate universe sometimes of, had I been accepted there, would I have enlisted, I don't know, right? Um, because that was sort of a forcing function of coming to coming to terms with the fact that I was an apathetic high schooler and that I needed something to kick me into high gear and I had this call to service and all these other reasons, right? Um, but that rejection was the thing of like, okay, I felt I felt rejected, right? I felt spurned and I needed to do something else that was totally, you know, sort of, um, I guess, of my own merit, right? And I like the idea of, uh, of being able to, to, to succeed or fail in the Marine Corps based off of my own capabilities. Um, and that shaped me, right? Obviously, the military and veteran uh, uh, veteran culture has played a huge role in my life, to say the least. Five years later, I got rejected when I applied to University of Michigan. So I applied, I applied when I was on deployment. Um, I applied to five schools. My search criteria, I went to Google on, you know, the, uh, <laughs> on the computers while I was deployed in those huts. And I typed in um, Arabic um, college and veteran, and I applied to whatever schools came up. I think it was five schools. And the first one I heard back from was, was University of Michigan. It was actually one of the lower rank schools. Um, and um, that stung, right? Because I was thinking, oh, I, I thought I had what it took there, right? I was an Arabic translator that was applying to be able to continue to study Arabic. Um, you know, and my, my grades were okay, right? From my, from the Defense Language Institute, they weren't great. Um, but, you know, I thought that I had taken what I, what the steps I needed to take in order to get admitted to a school like that. No. Um, at the bottom of the number, form rejection letter, at the bottom of that letter, there's a number that said, you know, if you have any questions, call. I don't think anybody ever calls, but I decided to, right? Not to argue my way in, but to be able to say, hey, I, you know, I'm curious, right? I, I frankly thought that I was going to be able to get, and I thought I put together a compelling application. Apparently, you all disagree, okay? I have other live applications. What can I do to improve my chances, right, next time I apply? And I got paired up with a really great admissions counselor who said, well, look, you haven't actually proven that you can get A's. Fair point. Didn't get many A's in high school. Again, Defense Language Institute. I think a solid 2.9 from DLI. Um, so I went the next day and enrolled in community college classes and called that admissions counselor back and or that admissions officer and said, "Hey, okay, I'm a, I'm you know I'm I'm enrolled. Let me show you I can do this." And through a bizarre set of circumstances, I ended up getting admitted to U of M that same cycle. Now, my advice here is not everybody that gets rejected. I don't want to give you um, some sort of sense of like what worked for me there will work for you. I do think that there's value in actually calling those numbers, um, that human connection can really matter. And you, what's the worst that they say? No, there's nothing we can do for you. Okay. All right. Well, I'm still rejected. That didn't change anything. They can't reject you more, right? If they've already rejected you. But the broader lesson is that I think it's important when you get that type of news to be able to pause for a minute and say, wow, okay, that sucked, right? I thought that before I got that rejection, um, I thought that I was going to get admitted, right? And so being able to pause and reflect and like, that, that kind of changes a lot for me. If I don't get admitted anywhere, this is my plan. This is what I was going to do post-military. And I don't know what I'm going to do. 
Um, to be able to sit with that and to acknowledge that matters. But then the what comes next, right? The action plan, whether it's calling that number, whether it's thinking about your other applications, whether it's about, um, you know, retaking whatever the standardized tests are that, you know, are required for that institution, whether it's reaching out to your network, whether it's working within the WSP network to figure out, you know, what you can do to be able to improve your chances next time, um, or, you know, getting a job for a year and then reapplying, whatever the thing is, right? Um, allow yourself to feel what you feel and then build that plan for what comes next and use the hell out of the WSP resources. One of the things um, I'll, I'll mention here too, is I'm going to start doing some alumni office hours. So if I can personally have helped you, right, I'm going to drop a Calendly link in this email. Um, some of you know, I have mixed feelings on Calendly, but I think this is one of the few circumstances where it actually makes sense to use. Um, but ask me, right, I'm happy to pair you up with people in my network that, that can help you, whether for this cycle or for next cycle. Um, and the same thing is actually true for those of you on the wait list, right? Sometimes when you get put on a wait list, you can resign yourself to thinking, well, the chances are really slim, right? So I'm, I might as well assume that I'm not going to get in. No, if you're on a wait list, you got some work to do, right? Don't write a generic letter of continued interest, right? Do the legwork, find people in that community that can really help you build a compelling letter of interest of why this school is the place that you want to be. Um, you know, a, a wait list is, is an invitation to reignite, you know, reignite your own passion for that institution and that program and to be able to make them really understand why that's the place you want to be. So that's it, folks. Um, those of you that have been admitted someplace, congratulations. Those of you that are on the wait list, don't give up. Now's your time to really show up and really be able to fight. And those of you that were rejected, feel what you're going to feel, allow yourself to feel that, and then get to work. All right. I'm here if I can help any of you with anything. See you, folks.